Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, the pre-GAFCON edition, or post-Ramadan. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden, and it's the 12th of June, 2018. I don't, people people don't realize this, but being a co-host on Anglican Unscripted, it's hard. You're dealing with numbers all the time and dates. <laughs> you have to deal with me, which is really, you know, a, a big pain. Gavin, how you been? I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled, Kevin. I've just had news that the uh, National Health Service is going to give me a spare part for my hip, and I'm going to I'm going to get a new hip. Um, I've I don't uh, this morning at morning prayer. There was a reading from St. Francis de Sales, uh, and and the spiritual advice was don't complain when you're ill. Ah. Offer it, offer it to the Lord, um, and remember how much He suffered for you, and uh, because otherwise you'll slip into self pity. So trying to avoid slipping into self pity, it's been a very difficult two years with an enormous amount of pain, and I've not been able to walk or exercise. And the thought that I might get my legs back uh, and be able to bicycle and walk in the hills is just so exciting. So apparently there's an eight week, uh, an eight week lead in. Uh, I've got to lose uh, several stone. <laughs> uh, for those in America, it. that's that's weight. <laughs> lots of pounds. Lots of, you would think that the British would use pounds for their weight, not stones, but whatever, you know. You, you would. Uh, my, my wife began the diet this week, and I've lost half a stone. What's that? Seven, eight pounds. Away. So nice. I, I'm worried about Jerusalem, because if you see me reaching for the cheese, you're, you're, you're under strict instructions to slap my fingers. <laughs> If you're not <laughs> well, the the neat thing about these conferences is they put out these huge buffets, and the morning buffet is high protein eggs, lettuce, fish, mushrooms, vegetables, and the lunch one is the same. So uh, you will find yourself grazing in the in the veg- the vegetable aisle over there uh, in the in the buffet line. I think you'll enjoy it. Carrots and cucumbers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm very excited because uh, because with um, hopefully in about eight weeks time I shall have an operation, and then I'd be confined to my house for six weeks while it um, um, whilst it gets better. And we're on this we're on this hill, so I really I really won't I should be marooned. I sh- I'm I'm looking forward to reading and writing, and I hope you'll call often. <laughs> we will call as soon as you're off the pain pills and you, you stop storing your words. You're on you're on air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the way we roll and and people are wondering what's with the vest well it, I, i'm assuming you've just washing your shirts so you're ready for gaff gun everything's packed away all, 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 all the formal all the formal wear is there so i'm this is my i'm in downtime now yes it's uh, um actually there's another reason but you're right i better get on with the packing no no <laughs> the vest is ordinary time for for gavin um let's move on to a little bit of news that the latest war uh, that I see in the blogs over in England is over uh, the Church of England getting together in the cathedrals and celebrating the end of Ram- Ramadan. And I thought I'd bring you in on this because if there's a war in the blogs, you you either know what's going on or you're causing it. Um, tell us about <laughs> a little bit about the the Ramadan uh, uh, outrage. I'm just about to try and cause it. I'm trying to get my thoughts <laughs> together to, to to write coherently about it. But it, well, it, it goes something like this, Kevin. So, so so we have facts, and then we have interpretation. Yes. But the fact the facts are that uh, the day that Ramadan there ended, uh, Ramadan, as everyone knows, is the, is the fasting period for Muslims. Uh, it happened to be the day when, which was the anniversary of the death of a number of pedestrians on London Bridge. Some ISIS supporters drove a van at them and mowed them down as they crossed the river. Now, right on the southwest corner of London Bridge is Southwark Cathedral. It's it's tucked down in a dip. It nestles right up against the bridge. So it just so happened that uh, on the day of the anniversary, the cathedral opened its doors to the Muslim community and it, it it had an, an iftar event. Now, okay, as many so people said, it didn't have anything with Christian liturgy. It actually had a no. Muslim event. It's 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 a Muslim event. It's not okay. a service. Many people said, "Calm down. If it was a service, you could be cross." But it isn't. It's it's breakfast. It's it's an evening meal. In fact, uh, you know, breaking the fast in the evening. Look, it's just a picnic with Muslims. So, for you know, what's eating you relax? Well. 
what was eating many people at the time was that um, a cathedral is a symbolic place. Um, it stands for uh, it stands for the authority of, of the bishop, for, which is essentially the authority of apostolic witness, which means that Jesus rose from the dead and everything written about him is true. Now, what does the Muslim sta community stand for? Well, of course, it stands for a number of things because Islam is is a political uh, um uh, e events the wrong word it's a it's a political a, a body as well as a religious one in, in in that sense it's it's different from christianity now many people who want who commentate on islamic affairs treat islam as though it's a kind of arabic form of judeo-christianity correct they try, that's what but they try it, to, it, to equate but it isn't you cannot equate them they're not symmetrical opposites uh, they they have some enormously important differences in them, and and you can't lay them side by side and say, well, you know, we we are contrasting and comparing the similar. The, of course, there are similarities in some respects, but there are such huge differences that it makes proper contrast difficult. So one of the differences is that the Islamic community are called to imitate Muhammad, and indeed, in the traditions of uh, of Islam, uh, Ramadan is following Muhammad's example. So when you end the fast of Ramadan, you end this particular part of the imitation of Muhammad. Now, the thing is, you don't get to choose which bits of Muhammad you imitate and which bits you don't. You're supposed to imitate the whole of him. And if you don't, you're a poor Muslim. The good Muslim imitates all of Muhammad. And one of the things Muhammad did was to kill his enemies. So the people on the bridge were imitating Muhammad in the way that they killed the infidels and the people in the cathedral were imitating Muhammad in the way that they ended the fast. Now you might say well Gavin that's a horrible comparison to make. How can you possibly link those two communities and those two events? And the answer is because Islam doesn't allow for any distinction between imitating Muhammad in one aspect and imitating him in the other. And that's why radicalization has worked because radical Muslims, that is Muslims who want to uh, live out the second half of the Quran as well as the first half, the second half is where the violence lies mainly, say to other Muslims, you're being half Muslims, you're being wimps, you're not honoring God. To, to fully honor God and live out the Quran, you have to kill the kafirs. You have to aim for world domination. You have to aim for Sharia law. You have to aim for the Islamic State. And it's not very difficult to imagine that, that many people seeking some kind of greater security in Islam say, yeah, that, that's the deal. You never hear a moderate Muslim voice saying that's not the deal. Well, there's one. There's one there's wonderful one. Muslim <laughs> yes, imam yes. in Australia. I want, mm -hmm. I, I want to interview him, but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to bring him to light because he'll, he'll be offed. I mean, so many people have threatened his life. I don't know. He is such a nice man, and he's just lovely. But he's the only one. Now, um, to continue the narrative for a moment, um, Archbishop Cranmer, who's who's just the most marvelous man. I, I think I count him as a friend. We've met a couple of times, and I I, I love his writing. I love his witness. Um, well, for people who don't know, he runs a blog. Uh, what's the yeah. blog called? It's called Archbishop Cranmer, uh, and, uh, and and his. He used to be anonymous, but his name is now Adrian Hilton. Mm -hmm. and, and there are a few things we differ over um, and, and in quite an excitable way. And that's, you know, that's fine. <laughs> no. so, so Adrian wrote this blog saying, for goodness sake, you, you people who are criticizing Southern Cathedral, don't pretend it was a service. It was just hospitality and community and solidarity with neighbors. So stop it already. Now, I was wondering how to respond to Adrian and, think, and, and praying about it and thinking it and thinking, how can this be done concisely? But I don't have to, because today, Adrian responded to himself <laughs> by writing a, a very powerful blog. And, and what he's, uh, because he'd come across another event, and this was another Iftar event taking place in a church hall uh, of St. Uh, Ethelburgers in Yardley in Birmingham. But the reason this made Adrian and other people cross was this was a Sharia version of the end of uh, of um, Ramadan. Ramadan. Sure. And, because it, and it was Sharia in the sense that women were excluded. Now, well, this well, is yeah, no well, so if they did this in London and the Bishop of London was invited, she would not have been let in the doors of a cathedral. 
in the same way that if the local bishop in Birmingham, who is a woman, had turned up to her church, or there was her church hall, she would have been barred from the doors. Now, Adrian, quite rightly, got very cross with this and said, this is outrageous. Um, surely the church should have checked first. So um, my, difficult, my, my difficulty with, with, with Archbishop Cranmer is, I think he misunderstands the nature of Islam. And I'm sorry to say that to such an educated and, and, and erudite man, but I, I really think he does because um, Islam is like a, a, an escalator. There are, no, there are no stopping off points. It's the whole of the Quran. Now, it is perfectly true that many nice Muslim neighbors uh, don't live the whole of the Quran. They don't live Sharia law. They, they do accommodate themselves to us. And that makes life much easier for us. The problem is that they are always potentially capable of being radicalized. Now, radicalized is the wrong word because it. Yeah, I don't. It, wanna, it, yeah, I don't think you're looking at radicalized. Um, so let's let's say that um, to be a to be a good Christian, you have to live 100% of the Gospels if you can. Mm -hmm. To be a good Muslim, you have to live 100% of the Quran. Muslims who are not radicalized are not living 100% of the Quran because the radicalization is the implementation of the power struggle uh, or, or within, the, within the Quran that, that requires uh, Islam to dominate the world. It divides the world into two, to two parts, the, the, the part of war and the part of peace, uh, the house of war, the house of peace. So um, if the, the great mistake that the accommodationists make with Islam is by imagining that by, by making friends with the 10% of the Quran version of Islam, they, that, that's where it ends. They, they've done something wholesome and lovely and, and the breaks can be ended there. They don't understand, I'm afraid, that, that the 10% will move to 20 and move to 40 and move to 60 and, and can move to 100%. Now, the, 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 the shock in England was when we discovered uh, and let me make sure that I have the figures exactly right. So in 2015, there was an inquiry and the Muslims in England were asked how many of them. It's only a poll. Um, so it'll be out in some way. Sure. How, how many of them were sympathetic towards ISIS uh, and the young Muslims who, lent, who, who left the UK to join with fighters in Syria? Uh, and any kind of sympathy from some sympathy to every sympathy and 20 percent of the muslims in the uk said they had somewhere between some sympathy and every sympathy with these muslim fighters who went out now the other day i listened to one of our historians called tom holland being interviewed and he talked about a documentary he made amongst the yazidis he talked about the the, the 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 human hair, the bones, the raping of the women, the crucifixion of the men upside down, and said, I can't believe this is happening in the Middle East today by Muslims against uh, the Yazidis, whom, whom they particularly dislike because they're pagans and showed no mercy to. And so why doesn't the West understand this atrocious genocide that's taking place? Well, for the same reason it didn't understand when the Turks... Uh, conducted a genocide against the Armenians at the beginning of the 20th century. People prefer not to because if they woke up to the knowledge that a little bit of Islam may mean the whole of Islam, it, it would be seriously very frightening indeed. We'd have an enormous problem on our hands. And the reason why a number of uh, Christians have said it is not the right thing to do for a cathedral to endorse Ramadan is because you cannot endorse part of, of Muhammad's life and leave the rest of it unendorsed. It doesn't work like that in the Muslim's mind, and it shouldn't work like that in the Christian mind or a secular mind, because to do so is ignorance of Islam itself. Well, uh, help me, why not invite the Christians to a mosque? Or why not, I mean, if, if not a cathedral, you could do a, an abbey, a chapel, Lambeth Palace would be the perfect place to host this. Um, why are we, you know, doing this at cathedrals? So that, that's a very good question, and it exposes the vacuity of the symmetry argument. Where have you ever had a mosque where the end of Lent uh, and the beginning of Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, have been celebrated? The Muslims are perfectly clear that to celebrate the end of Lent and, and the resurrection of Jesus would be to invalidate everything Muhammad stood for because he puts his whole authority 
on telling us that God told him through the angels that Jesus uh, didn't die upon the cross. There was no resurrection. Now, they know perfectly well that to invite Christians in to celebrate their feasts in a mosque would be to endorse the Christian narrative, to endorse the authority of Jesus. How is it that Christians don't understand that when they when they invite Islam into our holy places, we're not just being nice neighbours, we are, at least in the eyes of Islam, endorsing the Muslim narrative, which contradicts the Jesus narrative, it makes Jesus out to be a liar. Um, now, you need to understand what Islam teaches and how it works to know this, but consequently, uh, it, was, it was profoundly offensive when Southwark Cathedral, the witness of apostolic Christianity, endorses the, uh, the, the part of the um, example of Muhammad, uh, and I'm sorry that it took the implementation of Sharia law, Sharia practice in Birmingham for other people to get that. But if you want to know how many Muslims in the UK support Sharia law, the answer is 40 percent. So this wasn't a small group of Muslims. This is who, who, who want separation of sexes and all the other rather dramatic and sometimes violent things that Sharia law, the Sharia tradition stands for. This is nearly half of the whole Muslim community. Um, now, the difficulty is, uh, there's another difficulty, and, and indeed Adrian Hilton wrote about this very clearly a week ago. It turns out that the, that the police in London, the Metropolitan Police, have got guidelines of what they, uh, of, of you know what's coming. I do, and I, uh, I'm not even allowed Kevin. there anymore. But go on. <laughs> well, they, they define Islamophobia as 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 any criticism of Islam at all. Uh, to, to point out that Islam is violent is Islamophobic, and you'll be, you can be arrested for a hate crime. To point out that Islam involves terrorism and the killing of innocent terrorists is a hate crime. In other words, the Metropolitan Police are adopting guidelines by which they close down any, not only any criticism, but any description of Islam. And well, it's in this let me take it a, a bit further running out of the way of a speeding van down a bridge that's islamophobic how dare you think that he's going to kill you if so i mean that is so asinine oh sorry once you begin to tease out these things in in common sense conversation they become both asinine and and really very sinister indeed and it and, and you know i would if i went out if i got to take my my, my my dear pen friend uh, Adrian Alfredin writes, Adrian, you know, if you're going to write about the the horror of the Metropolitan Police describing Islamophobia like this, and you're going to write about your shock about the implementation of Sharia custom in the, in the celebration of Ramadan at the end of uh, uh, in Birmingham, can you not see that there isn't a seamless link between the two? And it's it that along that seamless link takes place this radicalization and the and the, and, the, and the the violent imposition of Islam uh, uh, upon uh, other cultures. All right. Well, we're hitting up at uh, twenty minutes, but I want to clarify. You know the difference between uh, we we said good Christian and and, and good uh, Muslim. A good honorable holy christian is a person who is willing to die for his faith and from what i read in the quran and i'm not trying to be offensive here but a good muslim sharia compliant is willing to kill for his faith and that's in, in certain in specific circumstances, circumstances to kill his but, enemies but, but um I, I I'd like to add one more thing, because because many people have said, listen, you Christians, you have no right to point the finger at Islam for being a violent religion, for goodness sake. You lot are full of violence. And look at the things that Christianity has done. How dare you point the finger at Islam for violence? Have you no shame? But, the, but, but this is where, again, the symmetry breaks down. Uh, if there's a violent Christian, you can go to him and say, to be a good Christian, to be any kind of Christian at all, you must forgive your enemies and turn the other cheek. Shame on you for the violence. You must repent. The problem we have with Islam is that when violence breaks out, nobody can go and say, you are not following the example of Muhammad. You are not following the example of Quran. Shame on you, you must repent. Because they are following the example of Muhammad. They are imposing the Quran. There is no 
break on violence within the Quran. And that's the difference between the two. We're all violent. We're all corrupt. Uh, I dare I say do. many Christians are no better than th th they should be. But maybe, but maybe many of them are not better than anybody else. But they have the potential to be made better by b given the vision that Christ offers us. Whereas w with with Islam, the and the confusion is that there are some wonderfully pious practices in Islam that are wholly admirable and 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 should commend ourselves to it. But we can't distinguish between pious Islam and violent Islam because Islam itself doesn't allow us to do it. And if we do do it, we're imposing a, a, a wholly different template upon the integrity of the thing itself. And that is why it's so important to fight for accountability within the Christian church. When, Absolutely. We, when we say we need to hold our bishops and clergy and lay people accountable, this is the reason. Don't make uh, you know absolution unnecessary within the Christian church. And I, you know... I'm so looking forward to hanging out with my Christian brothers and sisters in Gafgan. <laughs> I just like <laughs> the rest of the communion has just driven me absolutely crazy. Gavin, well, we, do... we have to pray. Yes, we, we have to do. pray that something very, very prophetic. <laughs> yes, because because what we what we need is we need the renewal of the church. We need mm -hmm. more of the Holy Spirit. We we need less of all of the, the 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 things that <clears throat> account for our flaws. And so. Um, one thing we can all do is pray that out of this synod, this gathering together on the way of Christians, the Holy Spirit does something really enormously profound and transformative for us, since we are no better than anybody else in our natural state. Mm -hmm. yeah, at the end, you know, Gafcon is not perfect, but there's a bunch of people there seeking uh, a closer relationship with the Father uh, and it's uh, in God's use with the church in worship. You know, Boy, I, I am looking forward to it. Gavin, I want to thank you for your time. It, you know, you've obviously been busy. You're, you're healthy now with your uh, retinas, and uh, you've been so gracious with the show. Uh, the next time I see you, it's going to be a big hug outside our Airbnb across from the GAFCON Conference Center. Uh, and I'd like to see all, you know, if you guys want to come up and say hi or take selfies, we're, we're all for that. Um, we want to meet people, shake your hands, find out where you're from. Uh, don't feel, you know, you can't approach us because we are as uh, gobsmacked about being a Gafcon as you are. So uh, we do look Kevin, forward I, to it. I have Ashkenazi Jewish ancestors, and huh? they would always say, next year in Jerusalem. You and I can now say, next, next week, week in Jerusalem. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashton, and you've been listening to episode 406 of Anglican Unscripted next week in Jerusalem. <laughs>